Recently, I did a video on a band, $63 amp from Amazon, 1,000 watt monoblock. This amp was from a company called Datasat, but they listed on Amazon as Audio System N1. This amp has been available and unavailable for a little bit. Now, Datasat Digital Entertainment is a large home theater professional audio company that makes uh, products like this $23,000 RS20i processor. So I don't think it's really the same company. And I thought before that, hey, you know, these are not going to stay around because this is not true data set. Well, they actually have a four channel model also on Amazon for 78 bucks, the N4. And the purpose of this video is just to show a cheap amp off of Amazon, really not to highlight a company that may be misusing another company's name. So I want to make sure that's understood. But yeah, you can see the box here. It says 25 years Datasat Digital Entertainment uses exactly the same logo, and it's still designed by America and Mindy in China. You big dummy! Let's get the box open and see what's inside. Of course, we have the owner's manual. We have the amplifier. Not a whole lot else. These amps remind me a lot of the JL Audio XD series. Also, the Diamond Audio with the same color. I've shown that in a previous video. Here you get a little card that's all in Chinese. You get an owner's manual, which is all in English, which is very interesting. It's actually a really good owner's manual for what it is. It gives you all the different specs. We will talk about the power ratings later. Get another bag here with some mounting screws. Also some mounting feet for the amplifier. And Alan's keys. He gives us three this time. Wow, we need three different keys. What's up with that, Alan? This is not a Mickey Mouse program. I really like the way this amp has everything laid out here on one side. It makes it easy to connect. But it also has this top panel here, again, the same as the JL Audio XD series. Take out the two screws. You can pull off the panel. You have access to some other things. This panel is aluminum, as well as most of the amp is aluminum. Of course, it's plastic as well on the side and on the bottom, but uh, makes it have a good feel. As far as dimensions go, 13.3 inches on the long side, 7.5 inches for the width, 2 inches for the height. The width and the height are the same as the N1. On the left side, you'll see the Power Protect LEDs, ground remote 12 volt. They are four gauge accepting, also two 30 amp fuses. Then we have the eight different connections for four separate speakers, plus and minus, front and rear, and also the ability to bridge the front and bridge the rear. They call them front bridge and rear bridge. Here we provide an example of what happens when you bridge the amp. Also, we'll see four RC inputs, front and rear, left and right. There is no ability to use two channel inputs. You will have to use a Y adapter or something because there's not a switch to use just two of the four inputs. Under that cover we recently removed, there's a data set logo and also some adjustments for sensitivity, crossover, low pass, full of high pass, also a frequency adjustment. The rear channel also adds a boost at 0, 6, or 12 dB. Now, interesting enough, the sensitivity adjustments, the standard potentiometer, however, when we go to the frequency, you hear the clicky clicky. Ratings provided in the manual include 100 by 4 at 4 ohms, 150 by 4 at 2 ohms, or 300 by 2 at 4 ohms. It doesn't state the voltage or anything like that, THD or anything to that level. Now let's get the amp hooked up here on the amp dyno. We do have the front channels connected to the dyno. We have the rear channels connected to external 4 ohm resistors so that we can load all the channels on the amp dyno when we do the test. Now, if you haven't seen the test before, you'll notice on the left side, RMS power output displayed in watts. You'll see the ohm load in the middle. The voltage for the dyno is on the right, and you'll also see the remote display so we can calculate what the efficiency is. Four channel test, we're gonna test at one kilohertz. Four ohms first, it's rated 100 watts by four. Again, we're gonna be showing two of the four channels here, but the other two channels will also be loaded down. Certified test, we get yeah, 83 and 77, not quite there. Let's reset the dyno and try the uncertified test. And shocker, 83 and 77 again, 14.18 volts. Now what about dynamically? This amp did not meet its rated power at either one of the other tests, but look at this. It gets statistically right at 100 watts per channel dynamically. And if we were giving it 14.4, I think it would get it. So it actually did its rating at dynamic. As far as efficiency goes, 58%. Ew! This is a class AB amplifier though, so that's kind of expected. Two ohms, it's rated 150 by four. I think you guys probably can guesstimate what we're gonna see here. Not quite 150 watts. 
112 and 104 right at 14 volts. Now uncertified test takes us up to clipping. As before, uh, it's pretty close with these two tests, 114 and 104. Now what about that dynamic burst? Can we possibly get the rated 150 watts here using the dynamic power test? And we're getting close. Oh, there you go. 155 and 155. So yes, it did meet its rated power dynamically. Efficiency 49%, so it dropped quite a bit here at two ohms. Next up, we're gonna bridge the amplifier down to the two channel mode, and we're gonna try to amp out. It's rated 300 watts by two. Again, voltage not specified, and based on what we've already seen, you guys probably can guess we're not gonna see that 300 by two. 225 and 215, so about 220 watts per channel average there with the certified test. So unfortunately, it did not get there uncertified. Let's see if we get right about the same. Yeah, pretty close, 227, 217 at 14.13. Now, dynamic burst, one kilohertz. Can we do 300 watts by two? Look at this. <laughs> pretty dang close, my friends, 298 and 290. Efficiency, 49% at four ohms bridged. As for the numbers game, we didn't quite meet the ratings except the burst test actually got really close and actually surpassed it at two ohms. But yeah, there you have the results there on the screen. Now the sound demo, we're gonna talk a little bit through this, but we're gonna find out, does it sound good? Hooked up to the ELAC bookshelf speakers. Let's get us some smoke jacket blues. I know it's difficult for you guys to hear over a compressed YouTube video, but I would say it's a little bass heavy and also the high end seemed to roll off. So it wasn't my favorite sound on amplifier by any means. Let's try a little back rub. This one's got some heavy bass. Let's see how the amp handles it. Now these ELAC bookshelf speakers are pretty impressive as far as bass goes, but you could really tell the amp was having a hard time controlling the woofer very well on these tests. And I'm actually gonna hook up a subwoofer here in a minute. We're gonna try it in the three channel mode. So let's go ahead and do that. We have this Rockville 10 inch subwoofer wired to four ohms. So we're gonna be running the subwoofer at four ohms, running the front channel at six ohms. All right, added an inexpensive subwoofer here by Rockville. We're gonna try the back rub song again, see if we can get some flex. So the guys who like the bass heavy music, I think, I mean, hey, it didn't do too bad powering this 10 inch sub. You are hearing some port noise there coming out of the port, but, uh, Overall, for a $74 amp, we shouldn't really expect miracles. And for a cheap, simple three speaker setup with a subwoofer, eh, not too bad. Let's take off that bottom panel and take a look and find out what's inside. But before we do that, let's run the thermal camera over the outside after doing all those subwoofer tests. The amp did get kind of warm on the outside. Again, a class AB amp around 114 degrees here on the outside of the heat sink. Let's take off these uh, torque screws here on the bottom. We have to take the side panels off as well. It's really a pain to get into this amp, but I do it for you guys because I love you. Here it is, the Datasat N4 and its beauty, four channels. 3300 microfarad, 50 volt capacitance here on the rails. And we can see for the input, 3300 microfarad, 35 volt. Those look like audio grade caps. They look like fake Nichicons. I wasn't aware of that brand. You guys who are technicians, you can let me know if this brand is any good. And here are the uh, power supply MOSFET 60N FO6 here on the power supply side. And then for the outputs, it's the TIP 35 and 36 Cs. There you have it, the guts of the Datasat N4. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. Find out the things that we like, things we think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First up, the pros. It's cheap when it's available. Looks kind of cool. Two, three, or four channel flexibility. 
did a rated power dynamically, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Most of these cheap amps have the Phillips style screw that kind of squishes the wire down on the top and it uses spade connectors. This one has insert terminals, which is nice. And it does have a bass boost on the rear channel. It is selectable. Things to consider, it does have the basic RCAs. Needs four inputs. There's not a two to four switch. Angle terminals, which make it kind of hard to install. The crossover slope, we're not, a sh not sure if it's 12, 6 dB or what. Sound quality leaves a lot to be desired. Unavailable, we're not sure. Is it a trademark infringement for Datasat? I think so, but obviously they change the name and they keep selling on Amazon. And my thoughts are this, you know, this company doesn't really do anything for us or for the car audio community. I would look at a different brand where they support the industry. You know, some of the other brands we've tested before. I'll leave links in the video description to some other four channel apps that I really enjoy. I really think would be better for you and probably have a longer lifespan. So thanks as always for watching. This is Big D. Till next time, I'm out of here. All right, now you guys want to see the lower ohm load test. So let's do 2.67 ohms bridged. We got 236 and 222 certified. What about uncertified? We still not getting anywhere close to that 300 watts. 238, 224. What about dynamically at 2.67 bridge? That's 1.3 ohms per channel. And look at that, we bust over 300 watts, 337 and 335 at 14.42. What you gotta say about that, Big D? You know how them sound waves go?